Welcome to another long ass video. Hey guys, thanks for clicking on my video. I'm Gimme Breakman and this is Tomoko Des. And this video is sponsored by italki.com, which is a great site for learning language. It's very easy to use. All you have to do is Hai, gengo kimeru. Sensei o erabu. Klasu o toru. It's as easy as pie. That's all you have to do. Thanks for watching. Do us a favor and check out the links in the description. And if you want to learn a language, they offer every language imaginable and some that don't actually even exist. You'll know what I mean if you go check out the site. Link in the description. Thanks for watching, everyone. And now, on with the video. Hello there, YouTube. It's Victor and... Tomoko de. And we are at Os Cannon today. Today they are having a kind of an antique fair. Mm. And I would love to wander around and look at all the stuff. But our goal today is to meet a well i'm not sure what he is he's a fighter he's a professional fighter here in japan i met him a long time ago performing music at a bar and he was and he's here somewhere in the temple so we we're looking for him his name is ron and he's supposed to be around here somewhere look at all the beautiful antiques though this is a great ah oh, is he they just where oh. ah there he is there he is how you doing Hey man, good to meet you. Yeah. Good to meet you again, right? Yeah, good to see you. Hello, you're Tomoko. Tomoko. Yeah. Tomoko yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice How long have you been here today? Uh, I got here like 8 o'clock this morning. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. So you I, been here that long? Yeah, I came with my friend and we've been uh, shopping around, looking at some deals. Got me a cool vintage oh. Seiko. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, not what I would have bought. I would have bought some weird Japanese mask or something. Yeah, they're around for sure. Yeah, they're yeah. just winding down now. Like they're packing up, right? Yeah, you got to yeah. get here early to get the good stuff. Yeah, yeah. I come with my buddy and he's all about it, you know. He's, yeah, yeah. Good yeah. stuff here in, uh, in Os Cannon, right? Yeah. So um, we got the camera on yeah. and <laughs> we thought we'd do it raw, give them, because I've only met you once, right? Yeah, actually, um, I saw you like one time crossing the street and oh, really? I kind of knew it was you. No, no, I was like, oh, it's that guy. I'm out of here. No, because um, before I moved here, I did some research, uh, you know, just doing YouTube searches because I knew nothing about Japan. And uh, you, maybe you two uh, showed up on a bunch of videos. And uh, so I kind of got a feel for Nagoya in Japan before I came here. So kind of knew you from there. And then we. Last time I met you, I think you had long hair, right? Yeah, when I first moved here, I had a big beard and long yeah. hair. And you look like a hippie, right? Yeah, well, you know, I'm an eighth hippie. Yeah. So, you know, I'm part an hippie. Eighth hippie. Yeah. Hachibun no ichi no hippie. But, uh, yeah, we saw each other at the plastic factory. Right, right. And the um, show there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I you remember. Still go there every yeah, month? yeah. Uh, I was going to go there last night, but. Well, before um, the kid came, so I can't go out. Nah, oh, last right. night? They had a show last night? Yeah, yeah. Oh. They did like a kind of bone and kai end of year oh, okay. party thing. You're so. from California? Ah, no, I'm uh, originally from Kansas. Kansas. Yeah, yeah, Kansas, yeah. Ah. But I moved around. I lived in Baltimore for a while. I lived in uh, Arizona for a while. I li moved here from Portland, Oregon, so. So how many people have said, you're not in Kansas anymore to you? More than I can count, yeah. yeah. That's, that's from The Wizard of Oz. Yeah, Oz you know no The Mahotsukai. Wizard of Oz? No. Uh, no Oz no Mahotsukai. Ah, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, very, very famous, I think, so. I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. Yeah, I'm from a very small town, country, country boy, so I hear it all the time. Yeah. Anybody to use these steers and queers? What's that? Only two things from Kansas, uh, steers and queers. It's only steers and queers come from Texas, private cowboy. No, no not yet, okay. They know better. Movie, movie things, okay. <laughs> hey, so we thought we'd just get into it. She's going to ask you some questions. Okay, okay cool. Here yeah, or sure. another place? It's, getting, it's hot now. I've been had this hat on. Yeah, sure, here. you want to walk around? No, we yeah, thought we could just walk around. around. Yeah, yeah, fine. Sure, uh, <laughs> and people can take in the scenery. Yeah, yeah. Walk around. It's been a nice day. Yeah, it's really nice. Day. Nice. <laughs> Too. Yeah, yeah. I love all the antiques. I wish I could stick around, but I'll have to come back when it's uh, earlier sometime. Yeah. 18th and 28th. Yes. Yeah. So it's uh, you got to get here early, and that's when all the good yeah, stuff okay. is. And now we'll, all the time though, because people want to sell. Uh, you can get discounts right now. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, I bought a guitar. Oh, yeah. And um, it was 3,000 yen, and um, you know I was like, I'm not gonna pay 3,000. The girl's like, 2,000. And I mean, <laughs> I'd be losing money if I didn't buy it, right? Oh, yeah, so yeah. it's, uh, yeah, I think if you know how to hustle a little bit, you get some good deals around here. Really beautiful. I'll just give you a little view before we go. Oh, this is a really sword. cool uh, Seiko automatic kind of vintage clock here. I like clocks oh, and watches oh, yeah. and stuff, yeah. 
That is old, yeah. Vintage. Yeah, two, two jewels. Mm. Are you guys are married? No, no. Oh, okay. We are, no. we are but not to no. each other. <laughs> <laughs> we are. Ah, we are. Oh, yeah. okay. Two yeah. other people. I see. Many subscribers asked to. They assume we're doing something wrong, but <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> but we've been friends for 17, 18 years. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah, you've been in Japan a, a while. You met huh? my wife at the thing. She was there. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's was my friend too. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah that was uh, <laughs> actually that day popped up on like my Facebook like memory thing. It's oh, yeah. been like I didn't realize it's been over two years now. Oh really? That's when I first moved in here. So. Oh, you've been here two years. Okay. Yeah, oh, two you know, years. Tomoko's gonna ask you all the basic questions. Hi. In Japanese, in English. Uh, you go, Kurosai. Nihongo wa kanai. So, how long have you been in Japan, you said? Uh, two years and three months now. Two years and three months. Yeah, months. yeah, just a little over two years, yeah. Nihongo wa? Ah, daisuki. Daisuki? No, Japanese. Oh, yeah, Japanese. Nihongo wa Nihon daisuki. Yeah, Nihongo wa kanai. <laughs> but you can. Choto dake. Okay. Huh? The accent's good. Yeah, it's, I think it's easier for uh, English speakers to have the uh, accent and the um, to say the words. But the, it's a very difficult language. But yeah. have you had any trouble? Uh, being yeah. in Nagoya, not really. No? You know, it was very embarrassing when I first moved here because I I knew like three words of Japanese. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so what's that? What's that? Yeah. Uh, sushi, uh, no, <laughs> joking. Um, you know, konnichiwa, sayonara, arigato, gozaimasu, you know, and that's pretty much it. So, um, you know, I remember I first uh, started hanging out with this girl when I moved here, and she said, Nani, and I go, Huh? And she said, Oh, you don't know any Japanese. <laughs> so, you know, the first thing I did was learn how to count because I would go try to buy something and they would say the price but there's no place to show it so I just give them 10 yen a thousand yen bill and by the end of the day I had a pocket full of change because I'm so embarrassed so I would just like you know <laughs> stick out my change like this and they just like pick through it so at least they're honest yeah exactly yeah, yeah. they just say thank you and just take the whole so that was uh, quite embarrassing, but ah, so I learned to count, and I, you know, it's, you just really need to study, and I just ha I need to study, you know, that's what it comes down to. So, mm. and are you? I, <laughs> I heard you are a fighter. Ah, yes, I am a fighter here in fighter, Japan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where did you fight? <laughs> uh, all my fights have been in Yokohama and Tokyo. Yokohama to Tokyo. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, what, what exactly is a, a what is it? MMA yeah, or what do we call it? MMA. Yeah, MMA. MMA. Mixed martial arts. Yeah, mixed martial arts. Yeah, I, um, that's why I moved here. Oh, I moved here because I wanted to explore and leave America and you know travel Asia. And I picked Japan because uh, you know the they I think they really understand and appreciate and respect the fighters here and uh, oh yeah absolutely more than in the states i just say they have a different understanding of fighters and fighting here in japan um but you know that's you know one one big thing is like the crowd like even here at a live house you go see music everybody's very quiet and they're attentive and they're watching the musician and not saying anything in America we're drunk and going crazy having a good time but they're really respecting the artist and it's the same way with uh, fighters you know they um, when you go see a fight in Japan it's quiet you, you can hear a pin drop and you can hear that no screaming maybe the drunk Australian or American guy but <laughs> really? yeah it, I, didn't know that. I went and saw a uh, UFC and there's you know 20 30 thousand people probably I was at the very top and you could you can hear the punches you can hear the leg kicks landing wow. because it's so quiet and um, and you know if, if there's like um a fighter is in a position and he passes and gets a better position everybody starts clapping and because they understand and uh, so nice audience yeah yeah Here. very very respectful uh, you know because I think uh, martial arts is very ingrained in the Japanese culture and that's why I wanted to come here to explore that and uh, so yeah I'm uh, I turned pro last year and uh, in Pancrase Pancrase is a uh, organization that's yeah, yeah. been around since 93 yeah cool. uh, um, shamrock used to fight pancreas. yeah everybody used to fight yeah but like shamrock and boss rootin were the two guys like that 
uh, a lot of fights in Pancrase. So yeah, is a lot of guys. I'm not going to insult you by saying is it real, but well, is the are the original Pancrase fights all real? Like uh, I saw a couple that seemed a little like not Ken Shamrock, but the other Shamrock, the Robert, is it? Oh, his John, uh, his brother maybe. I um, I'm assuming it's his brother. Yeah, it's his. Uh, yeah, I believe it's his brother. Um, most of them are real. I think maybe they had some exhibition matches, mm -hmm. but you know it's. It's uh, and still it's called hybrid wrestling. So it was like if, if like WWF was real, you know, some they say some of the fights might have been fixed, you know, but no, it's it's real fighting. And as time went on, they evolved as a company and kind of grew into MMA. They used to only fight in the ring. Now they fight in a cage, uh -huh. like UFC. They partnered with UFC. So hold on, Pancreas. How, how do you say it again? Pan Pancreas. Pancreas is not UFC. Well, it's all MMA. It's okay. different, you know, UFC and Pancrase are two different companies, basically. And it's, but Pancrase adopted all the same uh, rules as UFC. So all the rules that are applying UFC are the exact same in Pancrase. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah. your job is fighter or uh, No, no, I'm an English teacher is how You're I pay the, the bills. Teacher. Yeah. The day job. Day job. Mm -hmm. yeah. And night job is? Um, <laughs> well, that's a that's secret. A, his, his love, I suppose, is fighting. Yeah, that's my passion. Yeah, I love, I love to fight. But he pays the bills by teaching English. Yeah, yeah. There's um, well, like YouTube and me, I guess. I saw the teacher and do it. I mean, I love teaching too, but by um, but I really love you know making videos. Ah, just to sit up. Yeah, we can go. <laughs> we're breaking, we're breaking the law here. No worries. <laughs> um, yeah, but um, yeah, you know, besides fighting, um, there's there's lots of opportunities. Go ahead, Victor. So you you um you are register you have to register with the company to become a fighter there. How's it work? Yeah, yeah, I'm licensed fighter for Pancrase. I can show you my ID if you, you want to see a physical, it. I Right. Um, in Japan, not so much. <laughs> Japan is like the Wild West of uh. Well, come of could become a fighter. Me? Well, if, uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess <laughs> if, if you uh, if you get in there and train. Uh, <laughs> I, I see that you look very strong. Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah. You'll dance your oh. ass off. Right? <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I came and I, I joined a gym Alive and uh, my instructor Suzuki owns Alive and has a lot of connections and um, I came in wanting to fight. So, so the gym's name is called Alive. Alive, I yeah. see. Okay. And, um, you know, Hatsu Hiyoki, uh, he's a UFC fighter. Um, he's now fighting in Pancras. Mm -hmm. um, he's from there. So, yeah, he has a lot of connections oh, and... Okay. Uh, a lot of experience in MMA, so I joined the team, uh, got offered a fight, took the fight, won the fight, got, it was a tough fight, <laughs> one of the craziest fights I've had probably, I couldn't walk for a week after oh, really? it because I threw so many leg kicks, and then I got invited to a tournament, winner of the tournament, got signed onto the main pro card. You won the tournament? Yeah, I fought twice in like less than an hour. <laughs> wow. Luckily, I uh, I knocked the first guy out in like 12 seconds or something, wow. so I got out of it. Is this all on YouTube? Um, I have a few fights on YouTube. Okay. I'm not sure if those are on YouTube. Okay. Um, I'll be sure to open this video with a with a fight. Off yeah, YouTube. yeah, sure, yeah, absolutely. But have you heard it? Texas, it? Yeah, oh, heard. Holy Ghost, yeah. Texas only goes oh, oh, to the heard other people. Come from Which one? Private cowboy. Well, and both, you yeah, like both. You know, it's a it's a very dangerous sport. Yeah, and um, and that's why. You know, you have to really respect your the person you fight against because that person is allowing you to test your skills at the highest level. Mm. And of course, you know, I broke I broke this hand. Um, you can see really? some scars wow. here, like this hand here. That's uh, from hammer fisting. I broke this hand here. You can see how it's kind of lumped up. Mm. This is from a skateboarding accident. <laughs> there, broke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, I've I've broken my hands a few times, and yeah, yeah. sure. Fighter, yeah. So Get out of there. And. Um, Black eyes and bloody noses and <laughs> yeah, it's like that. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's all uh, comes comes with the territory and. Uh... Well, wait till you get married. It's even harder. <laughs> Especially when you get them kids, huh? Yeah. Domestic so. violence jokes don't go well in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed. Yeah, yeah, sure. We can sit and enjoy. Yeah, yeah, sure. sure. 
Well, let's let's God. let's get to the basics. So you've been here two years. <laughs> so how do you how do you become? I mean, how do how do you work yourself into fighting? I mean, I, I assume you came over here with a with a bachelor's degree or something. Yeah, yeah, I have a bachelor's. You got a job teaching. Uh. So you got a job teaching at, an, at a, just a regular English English school. Mm. And then you what, what did you do? Walk to the gym and say, "Hey, I want to fight." You knock on the door. How does that work? Well, um, you send them a, a tape. Uh, no, you know, really, you know, my fighting started in uh, Portland, Oregon, mm -hmm. and um, my roommate there was into jujitsu, and he's like, uh, you know, and I was, I was just drinking, partying. You know, I've always been an athlete. I played sports my entire right. life, so I'm no stranger to. Uh, to sports and being physical. I was a football player. Right. And yeah, so I, I started with jujitsu and, um, you know, and I, I did a tournament and I did another tournament and another mm -hmm. tournament. I just loved it. And um, it really, you know, jujitsu really changed my life because I was very um, not so focused mm -hmm. as a person at this time. You're basically and, partying, having fun. Yeah, I'd call it beyond partying, like mm -hmm. drunk every day of my life right. type of thing, you know. So, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't it wasn't good. Mm -hmm. And um, this kind of helped me. I have to have something to focus on. If right. I have nothing to focus on, that's when I go down the wrong path, you know. Right. I start drinking and doing whatever. But jiu-jitsu allowed me to focus on something and mm -hmm. it's something I was very passionate about and mm -hmm. I started right. training all day every day as much as I could and you know after a few jiu-jitsu tournaments I got into Muay Thai because we also had a Muay Thai class and so I started that's like kickboxing yeah kick, Muay Thai kickboxing yeah and um, I kind of dropped jiu-jitsu for a few months and only started focusing mm -hmm. on Muay Thai mm -hmm. And then got into an amateur Muay Thai fight, and I think I had three three amateur fights, and I won them all. And I uh, went back to jujitsu, and um, you know, really, my instructor saw something in me um, long before I did. And you know, I remember a friend saying, "You're not going to do that crazy cage fighting stuff, are you?" And I was like, "No, I'm no, I'd have." But the natural progression, kind of, that's that's where it went. And all of a sudden, one day, I I was talking to Omar, my instructor, and I said, "Hey, I." I think I'm ready to get into the cage. And he's like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. And I was like, and it, I was kind of shocked because he's not just going to say, yeah, let's do it. How long have you been it. training at the time? Um, maybe about a year. Mm -hmm. So my, my first probably like 16 months, I had 10 jujitsu tournaments, three Muay Thai fights and four MMA fights, like in my first 15 months. So I just, oh. I just hit the ground running, you oh, know? And, yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, you know, luckily uh, Omar really uh, took me under his wing and, and helped me out because I didn't have a lot of money at the time, and uh, he let me kind of train for free. You know, I ended up helping. I became an instructor at the gym and was teaching kids class and stuff like that. But um, you know, and then I decided to move here after a couple years there, and it was it was really tough actually because I felt like I was leaving my family. I felt like I was betraying you know the the America? one. Yeah, no, not even America. <laughs> just uh, my instructor my instructor that gave me the start you know that gave me everything like i i do owe it all to him you know so but at the same time it's like you got to follow your own path you know and and uh yeah and then I, I moved over here and uh i think day three of me being here i found a gym and uh uh with this guy danny blake this guy from uh, new zealand and he let me i was sparring with pro muay thai guys you know so from the oh, yeah. from almost the first day I was in Japan, because that I was like, that's my focus, that's what I want to do, and that's what I did. You already had a job set up teaching? Yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, it's uh, a lot of my friends when I started fighting in Oregon, mm -hmm. they're like, um, they're like, are you sure you want to do that? That's that's dangerous. You can mm -hmm. you can get hurt. You it know, is dangerous. You could get hurt. It is, but <laughs> at the same time, it's and it was kind of a compliment. I didn't see it as a compliment at the time, but. They, I just don't seem like the type of person that would be a fighter. You know, they're like, you're too nice. You're a kind person. I can't see you ever fighting somebody. Well, first of all, you're playing folk guitar on stage, so <laughs> you didn't look like a fighter. Yeah, you know, and um, a lot of guys, that's that's the way they are. You know, a lot of fighters are. Your life would change this, right? I know, fighting with it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. fighting really changed my life. Yeah. Yeah, you know, my mother, my mother hates it, like me fighting. She kind of got used to it. Um, but really, it's the best thing that ever could have happened to me because it, like I said, I was maybe not on the best path. Um, you know, I had my life under control, I think, but it just wasn't a healthy lifestyle. And Where were you headed before you started fighting? 
No, oh, who knows? No idea. Uh, I mean, drinking one, isn't it? Yeah, drinking and partying and having a good time. I was bouncing around. I lived in, you know, I lived in Kansas City. Then I moved to Baltimore, and then you know, I broke up with my girlfriend, and then moved to Arizona for a while, and then I moved back to Kansas City. Then I moved to Portland, and I'm just like bouncing around all over, um, and you know, just just living life. You know, it's just doing what came naturally and that's you know I never really had a plan to do anything I just kind of went with the flow and I mean like that's why I'm here in Japan too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can change your real life then. Real life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Would yeah. Japan be a pro, box, Yoga pro fighter? Yoga fighting with the Well, finding something, yeah, definitely helps, yeah. yeah. Yeah, martial arts, I think any type of martial arts is uh, really good for, uh, you know, self-discipline. Oh. <laughs> you know, like, but it really is. It, it allows you to be physical and use your body and you don't have to be fighting getting punched in the face you know um any level is you know a beginner who's never done martial arts at all a woman who's 45 50 could could join martial uh ju jujitsu and be fine or just try that next after yoga okay yeah oh yoga is a good you know same with yoga you know that's something that you're you're passionate about and it's uh, it's good for your body it's good for your mind uh yeah Oh. Yeah, have you ever done some jujitsu? <laughs> After we're done, I've done taekwondo. Oh, there you go. I've done taekwondo and and I did boxing. I was I belonged to a boxing gym for a while. Okay. So yeah, yeah. I've done a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it's so, great. But I have a question. Mm. Etto, I don't know the fighting world. World, mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, but uh, you um, have you ever hate someone or after fighting or after match? Mm, have I ever hated them? Mm. Um, really? Really hate them? Mm. Yeah, um, absolutely not. No, mm -hmm. not, not, um, not in the slightest bit. I've never hated anybody that I've, I've fought, or whether it's jiu-jitsu or Muay Thai or MMA, um, I've never really hated anybody. And um, I think most fighters aren't hateful people. They understand the risks, they understand what could happen, and they uh, they're very much respect the person they're fighting. Um, fighters don't hate people. There are a couple yeah, fighters. There's always going to be a couple. Sugar, yeah. Sugar Ray Leonard didn't, but he was up against Merle. What's the guy? The uh, guy's name. Name starts with an H. Sugar Ray used to go up against a guy. Merle Haggard. Not Merle Haggard. <laughs> <laughs> what was the guy's name? Marv. Oh, I don't remember his name, but uh, yeah, we'll Marv have to cut that. <laughs> yeah. But most, yeah, most fighters don't don't hate anyone. Yeah. Um. I'd say. 95% of the fighters, like the guys I train with, they're beasts. You know, like uh, my training partner, Kume, he is a beast uh, when it comes to fighting, but he is one of the nicest guys you could ever meet. He has the biggest, the only way you could tell he's a fighter is with this big cauliflower ear, you know, gyoza mimi. He has this big, well, yeah. Like gyoza mimi in Japanese, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, gyoza mimi. Gyoza ear. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, but, no, there's no, um, there, there's no hate, and um, you know that's one thing. When my friends uh, wanted to support me in Oregon, especially my friends who are women, um, they're like, oh, I don't want to come watch you, but I know this is your passion. If you worked hard, so we want to come support I wanna, you. I want to go watch. You. Yeah, hopefully I'll be fighting in yeah. Nagoya next year. Um, I'll let you guys know for sure. Yeah, yeah, but um, you know, the one thing they really took away from that is, you know, fighters, they're. They're punching each other in the face and kicking each other and trying to rip each other's faces off. But at the end of every round and at the end of every match, they're helping each other up. They're hugging each other. They're holding their hands up, you know, because it's uh, it takes a special person to get in there. And you have to you have to really respect your opponent. You know, I made some of some of my best friends I after we fought, um, you know, this guy, Freddie Bailey. It was uh, maybe my third fight, and it's the first time I remember looking across the ring from him, and I think we both know we have met an equal person, you know, an equal mm. fighter. And after every round, we're helping each other up, and um, and after that fight, you know, he he actually won the fight. I broke, that's the hand, fight I broke my hand in, wow. finished broke, the fight. You broke your hand punching him. Yeah, hammer fisting him in the head, <laughs> you know. Aww. In the second yeah, round, I finished, finished the fight, but after that, we became uh, great friends and started training together, yeah. I think uh, because once you like, once you uh, share like the swap blood, you know, with somebody, once you go through that, it's this relationship that you don't really have with anybody else. So you kind of have this bond that you don't really have with anybody else getting locked in a cage with another human being. Um, it's a very special place in, uh, in time and in your mind. So. Oh, that's amazing. Um, 
I don't. Well, what? What? Where do you go from here? What, where are you right now in the MMA world? Uh, you know. Where is your career? Yeah. You know, I've never had a plan when I when I started. There was no plan. I just did what, and that's the way I am with life. I just kind of do what feels natural. And um, with anything, I'm gonna take it as far as I can, as far as I can go. And uh, you know, honestly, my last couple fights, uh, I lost my last two fights, and the last one was a really tough loss. I was winning the fight, and uh, you know, ended up getting knocked out, no, really? knocked unconscious. It was a very strange experience because. First time? first time getting knocked out like that in a fight yeah um and uh it was very strange because i remember hearing 10 seconds left in the first round and then the next thing i remember is standing up yelling at the ref why did you stop the fight and my my uh training partner is uh cornering me he's like hey settle down let's get you out i'm like what's going on i got knocked out i had no idea, had no idea. and um you know, Completely I'm disoriented. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like getting hit by a car. <laughs> yeah. Like, what happened? But um, you know, I'm I'm 33 now. I'm getting older, and uh, it takes a lot of work to to stay at that level. A lot of training. Um, you know, my body's starting to kind of feel it, and uh, I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm done fighting, but I'm definitely not as I don't say want to say passionate, but. Like, actually, I'm at a great point right now in my life with fighting because when I started fighting, it felt like I had to fight. Like, there's something in me, something like my past is just like something I had to get out. You know, that's why I love football, this aggression. And, um, and I had to fight. Like, it's something I had to do. And I've done it. I did it. You know, I've, I've come a long ways from where I started, which were, was absolutely nowhere. And um, now I still want to fight, but I don't have to fight. Like, I found some peace within myself that really is, uh, is a great feeling as a, just as a human being and, uh, you know, as a fighter to not have to fight anymore. Maybe this is a strange question, but do you like fighting? I mean, I, I feel like... <laughs> uh, no, I don't like fighting. I love it. I love it. I love fighting. Yeah, I love to fight. Um, because it's um, not everybody can do it. You know, it's not something that the average person can do, I don't think. And it takes a lot of uh, preparation. It takes uh, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of commitment. You know, dieting, training, running, jujitsu, Muay Thai, running the stairs, doing strength conditioning. Um, not anybody can do it. So, you know, and when you're in this moment in the cage, it's like, you're you're on a different planet you know it's this it's i i almost describe it like being in love with a woman as strange as that sounds but it's like um you're in this moment you're in this bubble you know it's this bubble and nothing around you exists except for this moment with this person and it's very close and it's very intimate and it's very intense and time stands still you know it's just like uh Einstein's theory of relativity you know it's just like time is not the same when you're inside of a cage fighting because it's just it's a different place and um, you know like I mentioned earlier in America people are very loud during the fights right. and uh, in yeah. Japan people are very quiet but for me while I'm in the cage it's all the same because I'm just inside this bubble and it's just a completely different world and I think that's what fighters get addicted to um, is that that feeling and uh, you know being in front of the crowd and being a performer and uh, you know kind of like when I would bomb hills when I was young on my skateboard you know I'd, I got clock going 45 miles an hour on a longboard with no pat and I didn't mean to go that fast but when you're in that when you're that in that zone, zone right. you have no time to think about anything else and so like everything else just and it's like this moment of Zen almost like this uh, yeah, this like meditation moment where it's just uh, you know it's really hard to describe, but that's, everything melts away. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it's a very interesting uh, experience, and and I love it. I love that experience. Um, but as you as you move up, you know, it, it gets harder. Your opponents get harder. The fights get harder, and um, that's just that's the way it goes. You know. <laughs> well, what are you planning to do from now? You're going to continue continue what you're doing. Um, yeah, you know, I, um, I think I got another fight or two in me. Uh, I need to re refocus. Uh, you know, I've been, um, you know, Japan offers, uh, uh, foreigners many opportunities and, um, you know, I've been getting into modeling and acting here. I don't, oh, oh, thank you. Have you seen, um, arigato. have you seen the Mozo commercial? I just recently was in a Mozo commercial. Oh, yeah. I just see that. 
Yeah, the big yeah, shopping yeah, mall. Yeah, yeah. I did see that. That was you. Yeah, it's me. There's yeah. a bunch of bearded guys, right? Like yeah, four yeah, or five yeah, guys, yeah. right? I'm in the middle. I'm oh, like the yeah, main yeah. Guy, like, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I did something I for, saw that. Uh, I was thinking, where do they get four or five bearded guys <laughs> in Japan? I, I saw that just yesterday or something. Yeah, yeah you can't really oh. tell it's me, maybe because of, uh, you know, they put white in my beard and my hair. There's four or five of you, right? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. There's five. Um, but, yeah, I'm doing uh, stuff like that and... Um, and I kind of want to explore that as well, um, you know, kind of build a portfolio, maybe in a year or so, move to Tokyo and... Go well, the Hollywood route, like R Ronda Rousey, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Female, female MMA. Yeah, yeah, famous fighter in America. <laughs> yeah, but, um, yeah, and then also, you know, it's, um, you really got to think about the, the long-term damage of fighting, you know, it is really rough on your body, it's rough on, you know, getting knocked out, you don't want to get knocked out too many times, uh, you know, I hope to be alive for quite some time still, and uh, be, dangerous, yeah. be able to use my, my brain um, when I get older, so obviously that's, that's important, you got to think about these things, yeah. では最後の質問で、えっと、じゃあこれからね、ファイターになりたいという人にアドバイスをしてください。はい。So okay. what advice would I give to people who want to come to Japan and be a fighter? Um, that's a that's a tough question. I would say for fighters specifically. You know, just and I would say this for anybody who wants to do anything, not not just with fighting, but uh, follow your dream. Uh, you know, if if there's something you want to do and something you're passionate about, um, don't let anybody stop you from doing that. You know, I think people get caught in in ruts in life and think that there's no hope and that they can't do anywhere or go any anywhere and and do what they want to do. But that's bullcrap because. Um, you know, if you're if you're passionate and you love what you're doing, then I'd say just just go for it. You know, it's uh, go for it. Just no, there's no excuses in life. You know, you you have one life to live. So, I think uh, it's very important to uh, do what you can with it. You know, as far as I know, um, we only have one life. <laughs> so, I just I live my life to the fullest in everything I do, whether it's music, whether it's fighting, whether it's acting and modeling, whatever it is. I just do it to the best of my ability, and I think. Um, for anybody in life, that's that's what you need to do. Just don't don't have any excuses and uh, and and motivate. Be motivated. Get out there and do it. So that's advice, ne? <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, thanks everyone for watching. This is Ron Schroeder. He doesn't have a YouTube yet, but I'm encouraging him to start his own YouTube. Mm. I'm sure he's got a lot of stories to tell. In the meantime, though, you can connect with him on Facebook. Mm, yeah. And he might answer your questions. I don't know how busy you are. <laughs> yeah, if you want to send me uh, send me a question or if you want to chat up, uh, you know, Ron the Caveman Schroeder. So I think if you type in Ron the Caveman as my nickname into uh, Facebook, you can find me there. Great. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, it. Victor. All right. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks for watching, guys. Matane. <laughs>